What's happening, everybody? This is Adi again, Gate 7 International, another deep dive. I don't feel like I've done this many deep dives in a transfer window ever, but there's a lot of stuff going on with the club, everyone, so we're just going to roll with the punches, keep the deep dives up until the club stops signing players for the, the summer window, so... Really excited for it. We're going to get into everything very shortly. Guys, if, if you haven't done so already and you're a betting guy, check out BetUS.com. You can do all of your sports betting for football there. Just use our promo code GATE7INTL and you can get a 125% deposit boost. They do Premier League, they do Serie A, they do La Liga. Anything that you want to gamble on with regards to football, you can do at BetUS and use our code, and you can get a 125% deposit match, really boost your sports betting. Great stuff there from the guys. I don't want to delay too much because there's a lot, a lot, a lot of concern over this transfer. You guys were in my DMs. You were on the podcast DMs. Everybody's been talking about Conrad de la Fuente, the new signing for Olympiacos over here from Olympique Marseille. Very interesting player. The first American player to play for Olympiacos since Greek-American Peter Filipakos. That's been almost 20 years. So really exciting for people like me that are from the United States to see an American player playing for Olympiacos. This is huge for us, huge for all of us that are that are from the United States to see somebody that is a also a national team, U.S. men's national team player. He's had a couple caps. So huge news for us here in the United States. We're really pumped to see this. A lot of you did have some concerns about this, and I hope I can address them during this deep dive uh, regarding a lot of the things some of you are concerned about with regards to his technical ability, maybe some things you saw while he played at Marseille, some of the things you heard maybe he was playing for Barcelona. Uh, as many of you know, he is a La Masia product. So some exciting parts of his resume coming in here. But once again, we're going to address everything in this deep dive everything and hopefully all of your concerns through the course of the scouting report. So let's get started. Conrad de la Fuente, 21 years old. Now he's a right-footed, primarily inverted winger. He has played on both sides of the field. For Marseille, he played on the left, he played on the right. He also played a little bit as left wing back and right wing back too. He had a couple uh, opportunities there. He also played a couple of games as an attacking mid. So he's kind of been used in different areas of the field, but most of the time he's going to be on that left side, inverted winger. That's what we're seeing primarily with him. Now his stature is not that tall. He's actually a pretty short guy, five foot seven, 170 centimeters. So actually he's about my height, maybe a little bit shorter. Uh, the last the last weight check-in we have on Wyscott is 138 pounds, 63 kilograms. I hope that that's not true. Uh, I know during my days when I was playing soccer and I was fully fit, I was in the 150s, and I was very close to his height. So it's a little small for my liking. But again, I have faith in our nutritionists at the club. They've done very well with players in the past, and I know that they could get him on the right track for his regimen. And as I mentioned, primarily left winger, a couple of appearances at attacking mid and at wing back, but the expectation is at Olympiacos, he will be playing as a winger. I'd imagine because he was used primarily as an inverted winger, that's how we will see him be used here as well. Player profile, very low center of gravity. Probably not surprising to you guys, being that he's five foot seven or 170 centimeters, pretty short guy. Very solid control. And I have to say, he has impressively quick feet. Uh, this is both good and bad as it stands for him. I'll get into that a little bit later. Also, very impressive agility. I mean, he can change direction and the acceleration once he changes direction, he can really cover distance quite well. Uh, very interesting to see. Uh, has a few, has some flair, has some step overs in him, not afraid to take space that's given to him, of course, holds the ball up very well, despite what many would consider to be a, a diminutive stature. He's a smaller guy. I know a lot of people get concerned sometimes that they can get pushed off the ball easier. If you're shorter, you don't have the strength, but no, he, he holds up quite well, all things considered, primarily because of his quick feet. I, I mean, 
that that gets him out of a lot of sticky situations. It puts him into some sticky situations as well, but we'll get into that. Uh, a, a fun thing about that, because of of his nature and how quick he is with ball, he does seem to draw a lot of fouls. Uh, very direct also, can stretch width. We see him kind of stick out wide a lot. And he can also take set pieces. So some very, very interesting things just regarding the Conrad's player profile. So I want to get started, as we always do, with his goal creation. And... As you guys have continued to ask for, I will continue to provide. Uh, we have over here some goal creation statistics compared to a one Yorgos Basuras. The reason I chose Yorgos Basuras for the comparison here and not somebody like Gary Rodriguez or even Lazar Radejevic or another winger that we've had, as you guys may have remembered, Yorgos Basuras was our leading non-penalty goal and expected goal contributor last season. When it came to... Uh, end product in the box. He was a leader on the team. Now, I know he's had a struggling start to the season, despite the fact that he had two assists in our last match, the uh, the second game against Slova Bratislava in the Europa League. Masuras has done a job for us, and his end product with regards to what we've had from wingers in the past has been pretty good. Not the best dribbling people, can't take many people on, but this is a great source of comparison for Conrad so that we can see, okay, what can he offer here compared to a winger that has given us the most production, whether we like it or not in our offensive end. So that's why I use Yorgos Masuras as the comparison point. And this is what we're going to look at with respect to the context of what we see here. So going back to the goal threat for Conrad, I only saw one goal last season. And it came in the Conference League match that Marseille had against Carabag. They were already winning. They were already up, I think, 5-1 to one on aggregate. Uh, but he did make a very nice run, got played through one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, made it look easy. Uh, now, despite, of course, having only one goal, uh, he I did see him with a number of goal-scoring opportunities. Many were outside the penalty area after cutting in from the wing, some rebound opportunities. He's not afraid to shoot with both feet, not at all. Um, you'll notice here, guys, you see the goals relative to his expected goals. He did underperform his XG. So that tells us that there is sustainability in the opportunities that he has. He just doesn't seem to convert them. Uh, his, As I mentioned before, he can shoot with both feet. The, the weak foot does have moderate power, and his placement's pretty good. So interesting to see, but I don't really expect that we will see of him on that right side. I think it, I'd imagine that if, if Gorbaran is looking at him, he's looking at him as the inverted winger. So that's what I'm expecting. Again, I could be wrong, but that's just, again, what I would do if I were in Gorbaran's situation. Regarding assist creation or what we call shot creation, uh, he takes set pieces. So we see a lot of them come from those set pieces, runs down the byline or to the byline, I should say, down the wing, whether it's wide, Cutting in the middle, we see a lot of those runs. Uh, the occasional through ball here or there, maybe he'll draw a defender, beat the defender, and dump the ball off to the attacker that's running in next to him. Um, but uh, I didn't see that as most of the cases. Um, most of the cases we saw came, you know, bringing the ball in, maybe crossing or playing the ball in from out wide. A uh, lot of opportunities uh, with shot creation. Uh, but he does seem to prefer to shoot rather than pass, or at least from based on what I saw while he was at Le um, Marseille, that's what I see. That's what I, I gathered with most of the these attacking opportunities. That's not a bad thing. Doesn't mean he's selfish. He has a killer instinct. He's very young still. He's twenty one. That's not something I'm worried about. And. With with the context with what Libyakos needs and what we start to we're starting to see with the Corbaron area, we need a guy that can manufacture something that is going to take chances and make something from nothing. And that seems to be something that uh Conrad offers. Now, in comparison to what we see with Masuras, you can see here Masuras edges him out on most of the goal creation metrics, more more expected goals, more shots. They're roughly about the same when it comes to assists. Masuras edging them out with assists, but with the uh, expected assists, they're about the same. Crosses, Conrad has 
significantly more crosses per game, almost one per game than uh, Yorgos Masuras does. But again, we mentioned that uh, that that seems to be the context with his his assist creation a little bit more often than Masuras at the very least. So moving on from the goal creation, we have our, of course, possession and build up. Uh, now, this is where things uh, start to get a little bit more interesting for us because, as I as we mentioned before, Yoris Masuras is a weird type of winger. And uh, this was brought up in Patrick Kasky's piece that he did, the piece that he did about Yoris Masuras and his profile. We've talked about this on the show. He's not really a winger. He's more of a striker that's playing out on the wing. He excels when it comes to getting into position, scoring positions in and around goal, but he doesn't have a lot of those build-up uh, metrics that really do anything for us, uh, besides, of course, making runs in and behind the defenders. Now, for Conrad, you guys can see here touch volume very similar to Masuras, very average. Again, not necessarily a bad thing because Marseille uses wingers in a different manner, so it could be that's how they intend to use their wingers, they don't have a lot of touch volume. Um, so he is he is involved in built up in a different respect than guys like Masuras or our other wingers in that he gets involved deeper in the buildup versus guys like Masuras get involved a little bit further up. They're more so the outlets. Conrad likes to receive the ball deeper and then make the runs forward himself, but he also can be the outlet. I mean, he is, he is got some speed. Top speed and stride is impressive. Uh, he seems to like to, to, to stay wide as well. Uh, at least when he doesn't have the ball, which is very nice to see. A lot of times you see these inverted wingers can have this tendency to pinch in or to slide more towards the center of the field. I didn't see a lot of that, which is very good to see in a young winger uh, because you can see that old habits. You can see bad habits sometimes in these younger players. I didn't really see that with him. As I mentioned before, he's not shy about taking space, especially centrally. If in buildup, he's given space to go more towards the middle, even take a long range shot, he'll take it. He'll take the space that's given. Something that's been frustrating for us, and with not just with our wingers, but with our wing backs, guys like Oleg, guys like Masuras, uh, they they're a little bit more timid. They don't exactly want to take some of these players on one on one. They don't want to take the space. They'd rather dump the ball backwards. I, I don't think we're going to see that type of issue with Conrad. The value, though, that I see at least, the intrinsic value, is in his off-the-ball movement. It is stellar. He will move. He will run. Now, of course, it's not like he had full 90-minute appearances. We don't know how sustainable that off-the-ball movement really is. He had a handful of them. And, of course, in the games that he did play in full 90 minutes, he did that did tend to tailor off. But in the games that I watched that he played, at least the substitute appearances, he likes to make a lot of moves off the ball. And this is very valuable for Corbaran's system. We need those rotating runs. We need constant movement. So we need players that are willing to continue to make those moves. And Conrad appears to do that in spades. Um, now, when it comes to when it comes to his 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 dribbling ability, when he's dribbling the ball, both not just in possession but in the final third, um, I brought up earlier that his his quick feet can also be to his detriment. Now, what I saw with that was. When it came to his failures taking players on and losing the ball, it came to some haplessness, I want to say. Sometimes his feet, I think, move quick too quick sometimes for his own good. That can lead to him kicking a ball maybe a little bit too hard or toe-poking it when maybe he didn't want to or falling over himself. I saw a couple instances of that. Some of those quick touches maybe that betrayed him, we'll say. Um, but all in all, he's still young. I mean, these are things that I believe he can work out of long term. I'm not super worried about that. Just potential wise, if we're talking about build up based on what we've seen in just the two games with go to bed on system, I think Conrad will fit in terms of the build up phase long term. I just think there may be some growing pain short term as he assimilates into the team. Now, focusing on the comparison between him and Yoros Masuras, uh, as I mentioned before, volume is about roughly about the same. Pass accuracy is also going to be roughly the same. I've mentioned to you guys before, when it comes to like wingers, I'm not super worried if it's in the 70s. It's great if it's in the 80s, but these guys, we want them to take risks. As long as it's not like 60%, you know, I'm not, we're not 
the panic bells aren't ringing. So um, not much to see here. Now, here's what I want to see, what I want to show you guys, and this is where things get to be uh, a little bit uh, different between the two players are in some of these other metrics. So uh, you look at the difference between the progressive actions here. Yorgos Masuras, as I mentioned to you guys, he is an outlet. So you will see him receiving the ball usually. He'll be making those runs in behind defenders. Not getting super involved in build-up play, at least in our third or sometimes even the middle third. It's usually in stride while the transition and attack is happening. Completely the opposite with Conrad. You see, Conrad is not making as many of those progressive passes, but man, when it comes to the progressive carries, dribbling the ball forward himself, he's got four to more than four times the volume of Yorgos Masuras. So very different. Now let's look at their dribbles. 1v1 dribbles completed. Again, almost, not almost, four times the volume. Yorgos Masuras, guys, as we know, not only does he not take players on one-on-one because -on -one, he doesn't really have the toolkit to do so, but he's also not as successful. Conrad De La Fuente, much more willing to take people on, has more speed, has a toolkit, a little bit more skill, stepovers, willing to take those risks and just better at doing so. So completely different profile of player. Uh, you see both of them. We've lauded Masuras for his, his offensive capabilities, his ability to get the ball in the penalty area, whether it's taking shots or distributing or otherwise. But look at the volume Conrad has. So again, this is something we laud Yorgos Masuras for. And Conrad De La Fuente has an impressive amount of volume, impressive amount of touches in the penalty area, all things considered. Uh, and this is good because not only are we looking for a winger that can do this type of dynamic movement, not just in build-up, but we're still looking for a winger that can produce in the final third in the penalty area. And he seems to be able to do that. He's, or at the very least, he seems to be able to find himself in those areas. I also included smart passes here uh, because a lot of people are looking for a creative outlet on the wing. I don't necessarily think he's that because he's going to have roughly around the same amount of through smart passes or passes that lead to major scoring chances as Masuras. And uh, I think it's very important that we realize that in that respect, he's not going to be that much different. Again, not to say that he, he's bad or that he's worse than Masuras, but he's he's a he's a player that's going to create impact in different ways. Moving on, we're going to next get into the defensive profiles. Now, when it comes to these wingers, uh, as I've mentioned to you guys before, we're not looking for somebody that's like going to be the best defensive mind. We're looking for somebody that can press adequately basically do his job and stay in shape in transition when we don't have the ball. When it comes to closing players down, um, I will say Conrad's strong suit is not closing players down, at least solo. Masuras is, is and that's going to be a difference between the two. Uh, adequate effort pressing, but when it it's his success really comes when he's playing off of another defender. He does very well when he's closing down with one of his players, anticipating the movement of the opposing player and then working off of that. It's 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 he does very well with that respect. He's always cognizant of what his teammates doing. He prefers to be moving with them, not so much on his own. At least that's how it was at Marseille. Um, uh, he does. He, he, he I, I won't say that he won't go challenge players by himself. But you do see that he he hesitates when he he seems to hesitate at least when he's by himself. He just wants to stick with his teammates. Now again, this could be an instructional thing at Marseille. He, he the coach could have been impressing upon him to keep shape, stay with his team, don't get drawn out. That's entirely a possibility. It's just something that I saw in the tape. So I'm not super worried about that. He's not really good in the air. Whoop de doo, big surprise. Not none of our wingers are really that good in the air. So it's not something we're going to hold against him. And when it comes to loose balls, he, he seems to be, at, at the very least, quite hungry for those loose balls, even though he might doesn't win all of them. But you do like to see the effort when there's something around him that he's actually going to go go towards it. Uh, again, with the comparison to Yorgos Masuras, this, I, this isn't a surprise to me. Yorgos Masuras is going to edge him out on most defensive characteristics. Guys, it's no surprise, and it shouldn't be a surprise if I'm telling you this. One of the reasons that uh, Coach Pedro Martins rated Masuras so highly was his ability to track back and play defensive. 
but the good thing, at least here, is these things that we highly lauded and rated Masuras for on the defensive end, Conrad doesn't exactly lag behind on. I mean, just look in terms of his tackles, look in terms or and. Uh, uh, defensive duels, tackles, as we say, his interceptions, they're very similar in terms of volume. Now, of course, where Masuras edges him out is uh, in the air, battles in the air, and in clearances. But once again, as long as Conrad can track back effectively, as long as he presses effectively, which is it in the film it seemed like he did, this is what we care about. So this is something that at the very least – should be very interesting to you rega with regards to the defensive capabilities. He's he's very similar to Yorgos Masuras. So now that we've gone through all of the different the different phases, goal creation, possession buildup, I've gone through the profile. What is the verdict here? A lot of you have been waiting. A lot of you have DM'd me asking, what do I think of this player? A lot of you are worried. Is this guy a dud? He seems like a dud. Funny enough, a lot of the U.S.-based guys are the ones that think he's a dud the most. Most of the European guys seem to think this is a great transfer. The U.S. guys seem to think, oh, no. I mean, this guy, Adi, you, you're going to have a really bad time in this deep dive. You're going to be banging your head against the wall. And I'm going to tell you guys something. Uh, maybe it's going to surprise you. Maybe it doesn't. The value proposition with this player, we don't have a winger on this team that can create something from nothing. We haven't had one since Daniel Podense. We need somebody that can do that. We are in desperate need. We need a guy that can do something alongside Masuras, who, if he hits form again, will be one of those goal-scoring wingers for us again. But you need somebody on the opposite side that can create something from nothing. We can't rely on guys like Gary Rodriguez. Gary Rodriguez is hurt every other game. At this point, forget about it. But beside him, who is who's going to create for us on the wing? Who can? Okay, Valbuena, impact sub, whenever he comes on, but he's not full 90. Who's going to be your day-in, day-out starter that can that can play, make something happen, also be all making great runs? We don't have a guy that can do all of those things. We have guys that can do something here, something there, but we don't have one that can do all of those things. Do I think Conrad is necessarily the answer for this team? No. Does he have potential? I believe he does. Do we have anything to lose with him right now? No. The value proposition is great. He's alone with a buyout. We don't like him. We don't sign him. At the very least, he has, you guys have seen, he has the traits to be able to offer us something. At the very least, I believe, on a Gary Rodriguez level, which is enough. Am I comfortable with him being the only signing at winger? No, I think we need at least one more. I don't think it's, I don't think, Anybody should have expected a guy like Collado. I thought I'm going to tell you guys when I saw the tape, he's too good for Olympiacos. I'm sorry. No, I don't think that was ever an option. Conrad, a guy that's a little rough around the edges, quick feet, quick. Maybe the football IQ isn't hundred percent there. I'm not going to say it is it, that that's is the case because I, there's not enough tape for me and with enough teams for me to, to determine that. Positioning, I thought he was okay. Not amazing, but okay. He's got a head on his shoulders. He's 21 years old. There's a lot we can work with here. And we've done far better with way less on this team. Let's be honest, guys. So what's my verdict? Do I like this signing? Yes. I do like this sign. I think there's more pros with this signing than cons. I think this guy has more to offer us than to hurt us with. And I don't believe this is going to be a case like a room of vinagre where it's a guy with potential, but he doesn't want to be here. No, I, he has something to prove. He has not achieved anything consistently at the top level anywhere yet. He needs a place to prove. He needs a stepping stone somewhere that he can showcase himself at the top stage for a good team. And that's what that's what Olympiacos is. This is exactly, this is a perfect fit. This is what we do with players. This is what we've done with players. Second chance saloon or a great stepping stone for a young player. I think I think this player I I could foresee him having a solid year or solid two years with us if things work out if he's able to assimilate. Do I have concerns? Of course I do. I do have concerns. I think that ba generally based on what I saw, I think he fits the mold of what we need. He's fast. 
He's he he his positionally he's he's pretty good. We like where we see he can make something from nothing, which we haven't had in a long time. What concerns me is a little bit of his, his haplessness. His um, I don't want to say Bruma level because you guys remember Bruma's touch was a little awkward. The way he ran was a little awkward sometimes, and it could lead to some very goofy things in the dribble. I don't think he's not like that. He's not that far goofy, but because his feet move so quick, he does seem to lose track of it. It's something I do think he can grow out of. But if he doesn't grow out of that in the short term, we will see people get frustrated with him. What's he doing with the ball? He's giving the ball away cheaply. Those are the, some of the things I foresee. But again, that in consideration, those risks taken into consideration. This is a very low risk move for us. I like low risk and I like high ceiling. So when you have low risk, high potential for payoff, we like that. And it's something this team needs. So overall, my verdict is this is, this is a great signing for us. I know a lot of you were concerned about it, but I think we have more to gain with this player than lose. And at the moment, that's a plus. What we've seen in two games from the Corberon system, I think he can fit in that system. The question will be, can we find his scoring boots? Can he adjust quickly enough to make impact when we need him to make impact? Or is he going to take a couple of months, half a year of maybe him being a little bit less than what we hoped for to then to get that? I don't think a lot of patients... A lot of fans, I should say, are going to have the patience for that. But, you know, we'll see. But again, all in all, guys, I am pretty high on this transfer. I am I am excited about him, not just because he's going to be uh, the first American in almost 20 years to play for this club, but because I see him as a winger that for the first time for Libyakos in a couple of years, that can create something from nothing, something that this club desperately needs. And I honestly believe that based with on everything that we've seen, the stuff that we have, I I think that it's a higher likelihood that he hits for us than misses. That's that's me personal. Again, I could be wrong, but I hope I'm right. I hope you guys enjoyed this deep dive. I hope I answered all of your questions regarding Conrad De La Fuente. Again, you guys can always reach me on socials, whether it's Gate7 International, my personals on social media. I'm happy to answer any and all questions. I love when you guys come to me with data. You guys do it all the time. I love it. I love to interact with you, of course, when I when I have time. So if I don't get to you right away, usually I get to you at least the next day, if not sooner. So please continue to reach out. Please continue to like and subscribe. Help us spread the Red White Network. This network gets bigger and bigger every day. Our next milestone right now is 2K subs. We are almost there, guys. Almost there. About 200 away. 200 subs away from that point at the time of recording this video. So help us grow this Red White Network and continue to make this the best football community in the world. So until next time, guys, I'm Adi. This is Gate7 International by the fans for the fans. I'll see you for the next deep dive because we know there'll be more. Oh, pour pas, Jésus, pas,